everybody, Shelly here. Today we're going to compare this master copy attempt. It's a Bouguereau uh, master copy. The painting is young girl defending herself against arrows. We're going to put her in Photoshop right alongside of Bouguereau's painting and let's see if I was even close. <laughs> All right, let's do it. We've got Bouguereau's young girl defending herself against arrows. I mean, what a great painting. Look at the amazing ability of Bouguereau to capture these realistic skin tones. I mean, just so perfectly done. Nobody does it better. <laughs> and so what I wanted to do was a master copy, but I wanted to focus in on the profile of the young girl. So that's what I did. I cropped the image and you can see here on the left, Bouguereau's image of the young girl and I've cropped it to a 12 inch by 12 inch and I've got my painting on the right. So what we're gonna do is a side-by-side -side comparison. We'll see if I even came anywhere near, <laughs> you know, completing a Bouguereau master copy. Ideally, a master copy is going to look identical to the original painting. Now, I don't know, there may be someone on the planet that could come close to this. I know my skill level is not there, not even close, but I keep trying. So let's see how close I got. What I have noticed is my skin tones seem a little bright. I think when I was looking at the full size image, it did appear to be a little bit brighter, but when you zoom in like this, I wasn't quite right with that. But this image is pulled from the Art Renewal Center's museum. So it is, you know, I expect it to be as close in color as, you know, is possible, especially, you know, viewing it through the computer other than, you know, if you're right in front of the painting. So I have not <laughs> seen um, this painting in real life, sadly. Otherwise I'd have a better idea of uh, where I was going with that. So we did, if you saw the last video, uh, there was a color comparison that I did with the Photoshop using the color picker. So we built our palette based on the colors I pulled out of the Bouguereau cropped image. So I thought my palette was pretty much dead on, but it felt a little green when I first started painting. But now looking at the finished results, maybe I was, my eyes were playing tricks on me and perhaps I should have left that palette alone, but I did adjust it a little bit as I was going. The other thing I'm noticing is Bouguereau's transitions are much more subtle. I tend to have a little more painterly um, brush stroke kind of, I don't know, it's not as subtle as Bouguereau. So that's something if I uh, continue to work on this as an indirect painting at this point, it will uh, behoove me and I'll get closer to matching the original if I go in and rework these transitions and make them more soft, more subtle. I think the drawing could be off a bit too. So I have these two images on the screen zoomed in at the same size, same zoom. So they should appear pretty much close. So we've got her on top of my image. So what I'm gonna do is pull down the opacity a little bit and let's see how she lines up. So let's get her image right on my nose. We'll use the nose as the anchor right here. So you can see this ghost line here. I'll turn the girl off, the girl back on. My forehead's coming out too far. It should have been on this line here. This is my line here. So the drawing's off right there. The rest of the profile's looking pretty good. Coming down that edge of the nose, the mouth, the teeth, the chin. And then I notice this bit here. So turn Bouguereau off, turn him back on. This is Bouguereau's line. So I would have needed to pull this chin line down a little bit, but also I'm noticing here, let's turn Bouguereau off, turn him back on. So yeah, I would have needed to pull that chin line down, which means this shoulder is my line, it's too high, but it's correct as far as, you know, the, the distance from the chin to the shoulder is correct, but it's just not in the right place. 
So I would have needed to pull the shoulder down and pull the chin down. Uh, this line's pretty close. Let's turn him off, turn me back, turn it back on. So the back of the neck, I could have pulled that up into the hair a little bit more. And I'm noticing the hairline seems a little bit bigger. So let's turn him off, turn him back on. So yeah, I need to pull the hair out to here and up here more. This line's looking correct. His hair, let's turn him off, turn him back on. This is pretty close right here. The height of the head is good, but I should have brought my little bit of hair out and up. So the eye, the distance from the eye to the ear, let's, can we see that? Yeah, my eye's off a little bit. Looks like I needed to bring the corner of the eye up and maybe just out a touch. And his ear line is coming to there. So I should have pulled that ear back a little bit. Yeah, it seems like the distance here to here is a little close, but it's really not by much. I think overall, my drawing is pretty close, but it could have been better. Did I get the width of the neck? Yeah, so this line, let's see, turn it off, turn it on. Yeah, so the width of the neck came out fine. And yeah, I would have just brought it out here in the back, a smidgen. Okay, so we've seen how the drawing is off. It appears to me that this hairline is off. Can I see it with him on? Yeah, I can see a little bit. Let's turn it up. As we get him a little bit darker, I feel like that my hairline is coming down too far. His starts about here, mine starts about right here. So in the areas where I was off, it looks like maybe a quarter inch gotta be honest with you when I was um, starting this this painting uh, I was a little bit distracted and I don't feel like I measured and really took my time like I should have also this was a bit of an experiment because I did it as a selective start and not a underpainting first that I would have let dry and then paint the color on top of it which is how Bouguereau would have painted it which would have got me closer to his end results I feel like so I wanted to see if I could get there with a selective start where you mix the correct color and you put it down in the correct spot and the correct value and you paint the painting that way. I think that did not work so well, so I should have put an underpainting and then done selective start on top of that and I would have got closer in color uh, matching, I feel like. So the redness of this ear seems to be a little bit cool. I feel like maybe there could be some more warmth through my red and pink flesh colors and right through this back of the neck area i feel like i'm missing out on some of the uh, warm transition color that's moving between the flesh and this reddish shadow color there's like can you see it there this yellowish orange line right there i'm i feel like i'm missing that a little bit in the shoulder area, mine is way too bright or too light as far as this comparison shot goes. And this shadow of the shoulder could have been pulled up a little bit further. This shoulder is a little bit darker. Mine's a little bit too light. I feel like this could have been a little more rounded. I feel like his has a bit more of a curve in it. Mine seems a little too sharp. So this is a little dark. I think I could have put a bright red spot here and then pulled some of that up. I feel like he's got a nice red spot here and then it comes up nice. It does have a good hard outline sort of along that neck. I feel like I got some good volume right here so it kind of rolls in and her face is a little fuller as it comes out here. I feel like I captured that but Still could be some more work done here on these uh, transitions just to soften that up. It's a bit too abrupt, this value change from this shadow area to here. It's too big of a value jump. Same thing here, this part of the side of the face where it meets the ear, 
too bright in value. I feel like this is good. I got some good volume here. I feel like the the reds in my face could have been warmer. I put carmine on my palette. Perhaps that wasn't the best <laughs> decision. I think um, looking back now, I should have probably left that off and just worked with the cad red or the cad. I had cad red light on my palette, but perhaps I should have just gone with a straight cad red because I felt like the cad red light was a little bit too orangey to get some of these really intense reds, especially like in the ear area here where it's so intense. And I know that I can punch up the intensity when I mix Cad Red Light with the Carmine, but it did cool it down too much, I feel like. So I mixed my darks with a bit of that ca Carmine Red as well, and I feel like her hair in, this, in the really dark areas is, again, too cool. So the areas in the dark could have been warmer. I could do an entire glaze, like, um, a transparent yellow oxide glaze over this whole painting and that might take care of it that's something that I could experiment with uh, even the greens behind her head could have been warmer I'm not seeing that um, sort of sap green yellowy green color that Bugro has in his which kind of is being pulled into this hair a little bit and making it that warmer brown tones which I mean, I started to have it here, it looks like, and then something went awry, and I made it way too cool of a grain. Now remember, when we had the Bugaro image up and I turned it into a black and white image, we did that so we could see the values. The values in her face along the profile here were darker, and then it got lighter on this side, and we really dialed in on that when we turned her face into the note in. So you can see here, this needs to be a darker value than the side of her face. Like I said, she's way too bright. I mean, you can see how the values are off. I feel like the, the there needed to be some more darkness right along here. The nose and underneath looks pretty good. This upper lip is too bright. The teeth and the upper lip look pretty close. The outer edge of the lower lip could have had a little bit darker transition line there. This area surrounding the lower lip moving into the chin could have been a smidge darker right through here just to give a little bit more volume to that. I feel like the light part of the chin is pretty close and I'm missing out on some darkness here, which maybe uh, is why it doesn't look quite shaped correctly to me. Now when I look, this is maybe one value lighter than his. And even in the black and white image, I can see how this black and white image tends to have a little bit more yellow playing through it. Even <laughs> It's more of like a gray yellow and mine's more like a cool gray. I can see how there's a lot of dark area in his hair where I'm kind of missing it. Could have uh, worked on the hair a little bit more, I feel like. And the leaves behind her head are a little bit too light. This area in the sky, value-wise, isn't too bad. It's pretty close. There you have it. That is my comparison. I feel like I am way off the mark. <laughs> if I was gonna give it a percentage of success, Hmm, maybe a 40% successful rate. Anyway, it's something to aspire to. Bougaro is a master, and I can only hope that one day to even be a tiny bit close to uh, the skill level that he possessed here. So I hope you guys enjoyed that comparison. There you have it. Bougaro's young girl defending herself against Eros. The comparison. Here in the end, there's a link to some of the other Bougaro master copies that I've done if you want to check those out. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.